Ta-da! And welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. And in this rather quick video, uh, we're going to be looking at having our track so that on the curves, we're going to bank the track onto an angle uh, or adding camber, as some people will call it, um, and or the other expression they use is super elevation. Um, so basically, it just means that we're taking what would be a piece of track that seems quite straight, and we're just going to sort of tilt it so we've got that angle sort of happening that it can follow, a, a gentle one. Now, I just want to pay a special um, thank you to Charlie from Chadwick Railway, who covers this um very very well with very clear instructions i'm not trying to tell you how to do it i'm just going to quickly show you what i'm doing to try and recreate it with what i have available uh, a key thing that i can't easily get is the different type thicknesses uh, again we're going to go from half a mil and then step it up to one mil to sort of chase around the curve i don't have plastic sheets that are available that i can cut up or anything similar i could find in great quantity to use so what i am going to use though is yes you guessed it zip ties or cable ties as you may call them um, which i do have an abundance of and what's interesting is there's two sizes unfortunately i believe i've probably cut most of them up uh doesn't matter i have a sort of a regular sort of sized one here which turns out to be one mil thick and then ones that i've already pre-cut actually at the moment that are just little sort of mini ones that you sort of strap cables into and if you're building a computer strapping uh, power supply cables and things together these days it's all modular but what we did in the past little projects like that um and these are half a mil so i've got plenty of them so as you can see here i've just cut uh, a few up into a reasonable sort of length and the same with the uh larger ones i've cut them into some reasonable types of length to try and speed up it will take time um, again apart from the two uh, loops at either end and of course the corners for cutting into uh, there's not a lot going curve wise in this so a little bit of work to be done so as seen in the previous videos we have a cork foundation laid we're still waiting on this copy deck so we can glue track down we need to do this step anyway and i'm still waiting on more cork to carry on laying. So I'm in a bit of a bind and that's why we may as well start uh, measuring this up and getting this down. Now, there's a line in the board as you can see here, which is where I cut with the jigsaw and stopped both here and on the single one. So this line's going down and this one's going up. So to start this elevation, look, ideally, we'd like to start the half mils and then bring it up to one to carry on. But I think what would look a little more appropriate, remembering we've got some point work that's going to come through here, as you can see clearly here. So, but we do want to probably just start that elevation just coming in somewhere just before. And again, it is a gentle rise up here, so I don't think it's going to hurt. So I'm tempted to just lay enough to come around here. But where do we put it? We need to get that right. We come back to our friend here with the set track. Now, what we're going to do is start in this situation we're going to start from the outside and go in we want to keep this curve as wide as possible to give the best flow and the best look of course so as a result we're gonna i'm going to be doing this even though we've worked this out to be fourth third and second radius because we're maximizing the space the third radius starts to get a bit tight and we've got room to move so we're actually just going to let the cork dictate where we're going and I will lay flex track down. So we've got a little bit of flex track here at the moment. And what we can do, we're just going to grab a few pins and let's just lock it into position. And this will start to make sense what I'm doing. If I could just take a moment here, you'll notice I'm struggling just getting a few pins down here. Um, I did put some extra supports. Obviously, there's a support beam literally where that camera is and then the actual brace of the um, cabinet work coming across here. As a result, even though there's a join here, there's no additional support. Um, as I'm pinning down, I'm thinking I am going to just open my little trap door up 
which is located over here. And I'm gonna just slide, you know, we'll work it out, we'll slide something in, bring it back and get a support just underneath that. Um, again, once this is all sort of laid and ballasted and, and all done, there's really no reason any the weight of the trains isn't a problem. But just for what I'm doing, and while we've got access to it, I think I'm gonna do it. So the reason I'm struggling with the pins is as I'm pushing, I've got this part of the board that wants to flex. Now, we do wanna start keeping accurate to this. And the reason why is we wanna keep that symmetry flowing up the line. Even though it's curved, what we all love to do is come down at eye level and look at the railway. But you, when you get to look at two parallel tracks that are literally just looking perfectly mirrored, it's a wonderful thing to see. And especially when you're using flex track as opposed to set track, you are literally needing to guide every step to keep it looking consistent. So what we're going to do, uh, again, uh, from here, because again, we're only going to start laying from about here, so we'll just work from there. But where previously I was just taking measurements probably every 30 centimeters, in this case, we're probably going to be taking it almost every five, just to make sure we are staying on course. And that becomes quite apparent as we start curving because it's very quick to sort of end up with a little bit of a, a kink or a dog leg. Okay, we have this pin down into a reasonable position now. We can, we've got tolerances, give or take a little bit here and there as we lay the track down, we, and it, the glue starts getting tacky, we can uh, guide it and make sure it's in the right spot, put a couple of uh, coaches on to just triple check everything is right. And in the moment, we've got a bit of, bit of give or take. Again, by the time we have our track, and then you've got that uh, piece of plastic there, there's a bit of room to move. And we don't have to worry too much about how pretty it is because when the ballast comes along, it just all magically will disappear. So we'll follow Charlie's uh, guidance on this one. And we're just gonna take a pen. It doesn't have to be every one, but we're just drawing uh, a little mark on the inside of the outer track that's going to have it. And that gives us a rough idea where we're going to put that plastic. Yes, this is going to be a slow process. For the sake of the track traveling down to the fiddle yard, I'm not going to do that. We need to achieve as much traction as possible to come up. So I believe keeping it flat will be the way to go. Where it's not a constant a cycle where a locomotive can be running at high speed to continually come up. The idea is to shunt the train up um, and then work it onto the appropriate line it's going to be running on. And that's about it. So I believe it's just as well to keep this particular line flat all the way down. job is finally done and you can tell by my croaky voice it's the morning this entire project has taken about three hours to do which is rather extreme and knowing there's still a bit more to do it's going to be a long task the question is is this worth doing well apart from smoother operation around the bends and trying to give it a realistic look this is probably one of those uh, upgrades that you can't easily do after everything is said and done. We can't come back and correct it. Once we've sort of gone down with the track and the ballast has gone on, things start to become a bit of an engineering feat. So for that reason, I think, yes, it's worth investing some time doing this because the end result will outweigh the investment of time. The only thing I will say is, while I'm using zip ties here, I don't recommend using zip ties. If you can get this plastic sheet card stuff that you can buy from your uh, model shop, please do that. It'll stay flat, a few blobs of glue, it's down, and then you walk away. Obviously, I've had to keep coming back, massaging it, making sure it stays in position. And there's a few bits I see that just because of the curvature of the zip tie, even once it's been cut, 
it's got a natural tendency to want to bend in one way or the other way and you're trying to keep it flat. It's not the end of the world because by the time we come along, I won't pop it down because the glue's still a bit moist. By the time we come down with the track, it's literally going to interlock and smooth itself down and its glue is going to hold it there just nicely. But honestly, don't use zip ties. Avoid them if you can. It's what I've got. It's cheap enough and it does the job. But I would say it's probably partly what's added an extra 40 minutes to an hour to the whole project. But the important thing is these are down now. We'll let them dry. And well, here we go with a demonstration. A rather hopeless one to say that because without that track being glued down, you can see I'm not getting quite what I want to see. But we've got to finish the video and uh, the track's not exactly in the spot we need it to be, but we've got a coach on and so the whole idea is you should just sort of see a bit of an angle coming onto that coach there as it sweeps around the corner. Should give it a rather... And you can see that even though I haven't glued down at the moment, I mean, that's reasonable. Any of the bumps I came across with the uh, plastic ties, they're going to all be smoothed out and ironed out because once we uh, glue the track down and weight it down, then we're putting it all together as one thing. So we'll just conclude the video there. We can't do much more until we've got that glue for the track and we'll pick it up on the next one with that. Thank you so much for watching. Again, you don't need to subscribe or subscribe as some people say to any of these videos. I just put them out where I can. We'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Toodles.